What's going on, everybody? It's How To Tuesday, and today we're answering some questions from Instagram. I put out there that we were going to um, record some How To Tuesdays today and got several responses, and we're going to go over those right now. You can also do that. You can follow on Tom underscore Roland on Instagram. We also have Tom Roland Podcast on Instagram and Saltwater underscore Experience. Saltwater Experience is obviously the biggest platform and uh but i'm the most active on tom underscore roland that's my own personal account uh, so you can follow any of those three you can also text 305-930-7346 with any questions and we've answered some questions that have come across the text line on this particular show as well so those are a couple ways that you can get in touch with me uh for how to tuesday feeding frenzy pablo says What's your favorite tide to fish the flats in the back country, and what do you look for in a flat? Okay, so that's a really good question, and it has a lot of different answers, I think. First of all, I think that it depends on what, what fish we're looking for. Um, and, you know, I might look for a little bit different things on a permit flat versus a bonefish flat versus a tarpon flat, redfish flat. But for the sake of, of today... Let's just think about, okay, we're going to a new area. We've never been there before. Um, and we're going to kind of, we, we think that there are permit bonefish, tarpon, redfish, could be kind of anything up there. How are we going to pick a spot to fish? And what is it that we might be looking for? So whether I like an incoming tide or an outgoing tide will probably be determined later by experience right so once i go to a, a flat and i find some fish there okay now i know that that flat holds fish and i'm going to kind of try to replicate that i might then go on the opposite tide and see so if i found fish on the outgoing tide well maybe i might return there on the incoming tide the next time and see if that holds fish sometimes it's an easy answer sometimes they're not there on the opposite tide and, you know, you want to make sure, so you go there a few times at a few different stages of the tide. And, you know, then guides can comfortably say, you know what, I've just never done any, any good there on an outgoing tide. So that's an incoming tide spot. And that is what I have found, that there some spots are incoming tide spots. Some spots are much better on an outgoing tide. Other spots will hold fish, um, and you can find fish on both tides, on the incoming tide and the outgoing tide. But the most important factor, whether it's incoming or outgoing, is that there is good current flow. Now, good current flow, in my opinion, is more important than which direction it's flowing. Is it incoming? Is it outgoing? Okay, Flow is very good. You're going to find more fish on a tie, on a flat that has has good current flow than you are a place that is somewhat stagnant. Okay, um, that's for for most fish and, and and everything I say, like it's hard to put absolutes on anything like never and always and this is the way it is. Man, whatever I tell you right now, you'll go out and you'll find exactly the opposite. And that's the way fishing is, is that, and especially flats fishing, is that there are some good rules of thumb. An incoming tide is a, is a good tide uh, in the summertime because it's bringing in cooler water. An outgoing tide, the, <clears throat> the water has been sitting up on that flat for a long time. <clears throat> it's heated up. And on the outgoing tide, it, the, the water is generally warmer. Then you're going to have a real change that you can actually feel if you're wading a flat you can feel that man it feels like bath water and then all of a sudden it feels like oh wow uh, nice nice cool water comes up here well the fish feel that too so there are some rules of thumb that you can come up with and you may find that you know in this this area it's kind of an incoming area and this area is an outgoing area but everything and anything that I tell you or anyone else tells you, you can almost always find an exception to that. And if you're if you're good, you're 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 going to find exceptions to it. So for this for the purposes of this question, I'm just going to give you a very general answer that 
what I'm looking for in a flat. If I've been to a place, if I've never been to a place before and I'm looking for some fish that may be there, I'm scouting for a new tournament or going to a place that I've never been to, I'm going to look for a place that has current, okay? Is whether the tide's going in or going out, is it going to have enough current? Also, for the fish that I'm looking for, is there going to be enough depth? So, if it's uh, very, very shallow up there and it's an outgoing tide and there's not much of an edge on the flat where, you know, at that particular uh, tide, they're, you know, it's, it's either all or nothing. They're in the channel or they're up on, the, up on top of the flat, uh, very sharp drop off. That's not a place that, that I really want to go on that particular tide. So if there's not enough depth for the fish to get up there, that's not something that I'm all that interested in. But if there is a gradual tapering edge to where, yes, it's too shallow up on the top and the tide is going out, but all along this edge, I can find water from two inches all the way down to eight feet. Just a nice gradual tapering edge. Well, that is attractive to me. That means that there's a hard stop up here to where they can't go any further up on the flat because they're going to run into basically dry ground. And over here, it's too deep, and there's lots of predators out there. So somewhere in this edge, there's going to be a, a, a depth of water that whatever kind of fish I'm looking for might be pretty comfortable there. Okay, And there's good current flow. I also look for the type of bottom structure. Is it turtle grass? Is it uh, a sandy marl bottom? You know, what, what kind of bottom is it? Does it look healthy? Um, am I seeing other things on the flat that, that are, are good? Um, stingrays, bonnet sharks, um, any kind of other fish up there, bait fish, anything. All The more activity I'm seeing on the flat, the more active that flat is, and the more active that flat is, the more likely it's going to have to hold whatever it is that I'm looking for, whether that's bonefish, permit, tarpon, redfish, snook, sharks, whatever. If, it, if, if you go up there and it just seems kind of dead, you might find what you're looking for, but everybody likes a more active flat. Sharks, rays, jacks, barracudas, all kinds of fish up there probably pretty good likelihood that you're going to find what you're looking for. So um, I think that those are kind of the, the first things that I'm going to look for. I also want good access to deep water. So when the tide does drop out of this, whether it's coming in or out, I'm going to be looking for, okay, if a fish wants to get out of here, if something has scared this fish or uh, there are predators around or they want to get out of here, how easy is it for them to get off of this flat and go to deep water. Is it right there or is it way over there? Okay. Now you can find places where the, where the deep water is way over there and there's plenty of fish up here. Like snake bite is a good is a good example. You can get way up in the middle of that flat and there's plenty of fish there and there's not a real good exit plan for that fish. Yet they still like to be there for some reason. I don't know. But if I'm going to explore a place and I'm looking for the highest likelihood of fish there. I'm looking for current. I'm looking for uh, easy access to deep water for them to get onto that flat and get off of that flat. I'm looking for a gradual tapering edge. I'm looking for something that is going to be a hard stop, whether that's the mangroves or it's uh, a shoreline or it's some sort of something where I know the fish aren't going to climb out of the water and, and walk across land, so they're going to stop right there, right? When you're going out into just the middle of nowhere, you've never been there before, you might find them there. But it's also kind of good good chance that, that it's a giant flat. How are you going to just drop in and find them today? Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. But high likelihood spots are places where there's some sort of barrier, shoreline, shallow water, whatever. Uh, a place that's good to uh, has good access to deep water. A place that has a lot of current flow. A place where the temperature is what the fish is looking for. It's not overly hot. It's not overly cold. And there you go. You have a good likelihood of finding uh, what you're looking for, whether that's an incoming tide or an outgoing tide. If you're looking at it on um, low tide or dead high tide, you can still get a good feeling of the spot. Is there a lot of activity there? Is there other life there? 
but you're probably that's probably not the best likelihood of finding what you're looking for so those are the kind of places where you don't want to just not explore on on high tide or low tide you just go there and kind of get a feel of it and you're going to return on another tide and see if this is as good as it looked first and a lot of times that's when you find some stuff other times you can continue going back to a place that just looks so good and for whatever reason just never produces so depending on how it looks i don't know sometimes it's good sometimes it's not sometimes the most unlikely spots are some of the best and sometimes most some of the most likely spots just never quite produce like you like you hope they would or think they would but the trick the trick is is to keep going back on different tides and making sure that before you eliminate a spot or, or just say that it's not a good spot, you know, keep going back over time across the different tides and, and make notes, like making a note and keeping a journal of these things and where you go and what you saw and what, you, what your feelings were, that's, that's good. Like I saw tons of, tons of stingrays up there. There's got to be fish there. Okay, well, return to that spot and see if you can find it, whether that's an incoming tide or an outgoing tide. Those are some of the things that I'm looking for. Hope that helps you to find some fish. That's How To Tuesday for today. We'll see you next week.